Sevastopol, Crimea. Now, tensions are not limited to land. At sea, Russian Navy ships assert their presence, blockading Ukrainian military ships. A Ukraine's defense ministry says an old Russian warship moved overnight to obstruct the entrance to a lake. It's even trapped up to seven Ukrainian vessels inside the inlet. And in the eastern city of Donetsk, it's near the border with Russia, there's this tug of war for control of a regional government headquarters. <laughs> Pro-Moscow demonstrators stormed this building on Monday. They were ousted on Wednesday, but witnesses say they took it back and also headed to the local treasury. The protesters in Donetsk, they want more autonomy for the region. And there is a similar scene in the port city of Odessa. Riot police are in a standoff with pro-Russian demonstrators outside key government buildings. Our senior international correspondent, Matthew Chance, is there. He joins me now live. And Matthew, what have you seen today? Well, we were earlier at a location you just mentioned outside the key government building, the regional administrative office uh, in the centre of Odessa, uh, where there was a standoff between riot police and hundreds of pro-Russian protesters uh, chanting uh, pro-Russian slogans, uh, waving flags uh, from Russia as well, uh, and uh, uh, protesting against the authorities in Kiev, saying that that government, that interim authority, is not legitimate as far as they're concerned. They say that Russian-speaking uh, majority here in in uh, southern and eastern Ukraine are discriminated against. Their language of Russian is not an official language. They want that changed. And they're calling for more than that. They're calling for a referendum uh, for a union with Russia as well, much along the lines that the, uh, the parliament in Crimea has apparently now voted for. I can tell you I'm at a location now, which is the makeshift headquarters of the, the pro-Russian activists here in Odessa. You can see it's almost like, on a much smaller scale, a mirror reflection of those memorials we've seen so much in the capital, Kiev. These are photographs, not of protesters who were killed in that uprising, but of the police. The police who were also shot and killed uh, during that uprising, uh, those uh, street battles that resulted in the uh, government of Viktor Yanukovych coming to an end and him fleeing the country. Look, the flowers are being laid in memorial too, again, not on the same scale as in Kiev, this sign here saying uh, that we are in favour of a customs union. And that really reflects the concerns here as well economically because even though these new interim authorities in Kiev want closer integration with the European Union and with Western Europe, the people here in eastern Ukraine know very well which side of the, uh, which side of the bread has the butter on, if you like. It's that, you know, they do all their trade essentially with Russia. They want a closer economic union with Russia, and anything other than that threatens their livelihood. So, as well as feeling discriminated against, if the country of Ukraine does move closer to the West, as these authorities want it to, they're concerned that their economic, you know, earning power will be severely affected as well. And so, a great deal of concern amongst these ethnic Russian, Russian-speaking citizens of Ukraine about the situation in their country. Christy.